the timeline view in monday.com. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining exactly what it is and how to use it so you can get the most out of this really useful feature inside of monday.com. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help setting up monday.com or need any training on Monday, please check out the link below. We would love to be able to help. But without further ado, as you can see here, we are in the example board that I've created for this video um, inside of monday.com. Now, first things first, what we need to do is go ahead and create a new timeline view. So in order to do so, at the top here, you'll see you have your main table. You just need to press the plus button on the right hand side of that. Scroll down and you may see it on here. As you can see, this does change a lot. So if you can't see it, just go to the more views option and then you'll be able to either search it in the top, line, top left hand corner, just search timeline, or just scroll through and you should be able to find it. As you can see here, the timeline view can be selected. So just go ahead and press open in board, okay? And that's gonna generate a new timeline view. Now let me firstly walk you through the functionality of it. Essentially, the timeline view will allow you to see your items defined by a start date and an end date or a timeline column. So you can see when particular things are happening. Now this might be really useful for projects or events or anything like that that you need to manage a start date and an end date and a period of time in which an, a thing <laughs> is happening, okay? So, I'm gonna firstly walk you through how to set it up and then I'm gonna go through a few extra things. So firstly, in order to set up your timeline view, what you need to do is go to the cog on the right hand side. You'll have this menu at the top. Go ahead and select the cog and that is the settings area for our timeline view. So select that and you can see here we've got a few different options. Now, like I said, the timeline view is dictated by either a date column or a timeline column. You can also, in fact, select both, okay? So if you are using both a date column and a timeline column, you can do that. But I'll be honest with you, I would recommend only using the timeline because what it allows you to do is have a start date and end date and it will span across, as you can see here. Whereas a date column would just be one day. So you have all of these different columns and these will relate to your date columns and timeline columns just go through them and select the one that you would like to apply to this particular timeline view so in this instance i've got one timeline column i'm going to keep that selected okay so once you've done that you've then got the group option and this will allow you to group by different options or different columns inside of your board so as you can see i've selected status but i have only got one item on here at the moment if I go back to my main table, you can actually see that there's a secondary example task and it's not appearing on the timeline view. The reason being is it because it hasn't got a defined timeline. So if I actually go ahead and define a timeline for you, so let's say seven days time, or that might be eight days. But if we go back to the timeline area, you can see that that's now been added. And what it is doing is it's grouping by the status of that particular item. If I then head back to the main table again and change this or create a new item called example task number three, press enter and let's group this one by done, for example. So we'll set this status as done. What's gonna happen is it's gonna group by done, but only when you add a timeline, okay? So if I go back again and let's say I select this as the timeline and go back here, you can see that it's now grouping by status based on the timeline, okay, really, really useful. But this can be applied for a number of things, so you can group it by person, so the person that's been assigned to the item, by board, and by actual group it's in as well. So, if I go ahead and move this example task to here, to the active group, and go back to timeline, and change this to group, it's gonna group by group, <laughs> if that makes sense, okay? So you, this hopefully gives you a good example. We've, once you're happy with this and you'll have a few other options dependent on the number of columns you have inside of the system, you can then go to your settings. So you can ask it to show group summary and you can unselect or select that. So group summary will show you this active and then the days. And this, you might choose to hide this. If I zoom out and go to month, this will give you a better view. And we can go ahead and select that and unselect that. I would probably, in most instances, have that option selected. I think it's useful data to see. We've got show today indication. That's just literally the line. Again, this is kind of part and parcel of standard calendar views. We've got show weekends. So if you're on a week view um, or a day view, in fact, 
then, then you can go ahead and unselect the weekend so it will only show you Mondays to Fridays, okay? So whether you wanna have that, whether that's applicable for you guys or not, that's entirely up to you. And then we have show color legend, which is the legend down the bottom here. Um, I'll, I will come on to why that might be applicable in a moment's time. And also you can set your work days. So if you, let's say you work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and you don't work Wednesday and Thursday, I think, yeah, <laughs> Wednesday and Thursday, then you can tell the system that and the timeline view would adjust accordingly, okay? So once you're happy with your settings, we then have the color buy. So this is where that color and the, what was it called? The, the color legend comes into play. So you can color things by, let's say the person or the status. Now the difference is you can group and you can also color. Okay, so at the moment we are grouped by the group in which the particular item is in. We can then color it by, let's say, status. And as you can see here, if I just go to the months view, the color of the actual item will be dictated by the color of the actual status option that's selected that's relevant for that particular item. I know that was a massive mouthful, but if I change this to working on it and then go back to my timeline view, that will adjust to orange. Okay, it's not that complicated. I made it sound way more long-winded than it needed to be. If I change this to like an aquamarine color, press apply, head back to my timeline view, that will again be reflected. But this can be changed accordingly. So you can uh, change it by board if you have got multiple boards feeding into a timeline view. Uh, person, so if you've got, you wanna color it by person. And if you have loads of other options, so let's say you have multiple status columns, you can select which status column it's gonna be colored by, which is really, really helpful as well. And then finally, we have choose groups. So you can select which groups are going to be applied to the timeline view. So let's say we do not wanna see any, um, any items that are in a particular group, so we can just unselect that and then that will hide it, okay? So that's also an option as well. So hopefully this gives you an understanding of like the settings of the timeline view. Now I'm gonna go through the actual functionality. So you've got, you can define your timeline view by days, weeks, months, quarters, and years like you've probably seen me do throughout the video thus far. You can zoom in and out, you can zoom back in again. Um, if we go to years, you could then zoom out, um, zoom back in as well. And this, and this is very much calendar, standard calendar functionality. So you've got the auto fit option on the left hand side, which will kind of try and fit in everything. So that will take into consideration how many activities um, on the timeline are here. Um, so if you press that, let's say we scroll across a little bit, and then press auto fit, that will try and map it. If I change it to days, press auto fit, it will adjust to weeks. And then just that icon just to the left of that will take us to today as well. So the today uh, line, which we had the option of hiding or showing in the settings area, will be taken to today. We've also got the filter, the person, the search. This is all standard functionality inside of monday.com and I'm not gonna to touch on that too much in this video. But now we have our items dictated on our timeline view we can then click into a particular item to see the data of it. So you can see the timeline, the date, the person, the group. We are also able to move, so we can drag and drop the particular item and that will adjust the actual dates on the timeline. So as you can see here, we can also make it smaller or bigger. So if I want to go ahead and drag it to make it eight days or seven days or whatever the case may be, and then click in, that will again adjust the timeline and we can move it around as we so wish and that will of course be updated on the actual item itself and on the main table area so it's really really useful means of managing projects this is a really really helpful view you can manage um let's say campaigns for example so by campaign type whether it be facebook ads youtube ads um whether it be a call to action or a webinar whatever the case may be you can manage that using the timeline view and you can adjust it accordingly and you can also see what's running at the same time so you don't have any clashes of events or whatever the case may be there's so many many use cases for the timeline view. Um, one thing I will show you is obviously we've got the option for the timeline column. Um, in order to add a timeline column, in case you haven't got one already, just press the plus button on the right hand side at the very end, just go to more columns and I would just search in the top left hand corner timeline, press add to board and that will populate a new timeline column. The other final thing that I wanna show you is if you are using a date column as opposed to a timeline. So if I go back to the mains table, add some random dates in here. So 12th, 21st, let's say the 26th, and then go back to the timeline area. We can go ahead, press the cog and choose timeline columns. We can add, so this would be in addition to the timeline and the date. So this will show you the timeline 
and the date, but you can also just remove the timeline and this will just show you the date. But like I said at the start of the video, the difference is a date is one date, a timeline is a start date to an end date mapped into one column. Okay, so just take that into consideration. The other option is you could have a start date column and an end date column. I don't think it looks as good. I would always use that timeline column. So hopefully this video has been helpful and has demonstrated how to use the timeline column as effectively as possible. Um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.